This is nature's way of taking us to the spiritual path. Suffering. When we begin to suffer our limitation, when we begin to suffer our bondage, when we begin to notice how we separate ourselves from those we love, how we are cruel, how we're selfish, self-involved, it's when we start meeting the things in ourself that separate us from something that's truer and something that is, allows us to feel the connection with our own higher self. What is the charm of love? The charm of love is to feel love. Of course, to be loved helps. But sometimes even when those around us love us, we can't feel love. We separate ourselves from love. Why is this? It's not our fault. We were born into the world where separation is the rule. Where protecting our individual separate self is the rule. And everybody around us, our parents, our community, our friends, our teachers, our classmates, our co-workers, reinforce the same separation. But for many people, they are unaware that they have this orientation. It's a state of suffering, not knowing you're suffering. A state of separation from love and truth and awakeness and knowledge and presence and fulfillment, not knowing you're doing it to yourself. No matter what are the causes, no matter what are the explanations why we're that way, we're the ones stuck with it. See, it really isn't our fault. It's the way this dimension was created. This dimension was created for suffering. And the source of that suffering was separation from our true nature. When we descended into this planet, we became separate. We took on bodies. We took on an identity. We took on a whole way of being in the world as separate things rather than one thing. So that was the foundation of suffering. Suffering is always separation. The more separation, the greater the suffering. It's this separation that wakes us up to our bondage. If it wasn't for suffering, we would be happily unaware of our bondage. And we would live like cows in the field. We would just eat the grass and fart and crap and do all the things cow do without thinking it was any different. And when the time for slaughter comes, we happily line up in line and get slaughtered. So enough lifetimes of unconsciousness creates eventually enough suffering that we begin to question our assumptions. We begin to strive to come out of it, try to get to be better people or to make a better environment or to fix ourselves, to improve ourselves or the people around us. Usually that's our failed attempt. We try to fix everybody else first. Not re recognizing we're, we're also one seventh billionth of the problem. Every one of us carries within us the seed of all suffering that exists in this dimension. And until we can find our own individual part our own individual piece of that suffering. We're no more used to the world than everyone else. We're just drowning people, trying to save each other from drowning, drowning both of ourselves in the process. The way we make the, make the transition is when we wake up that we're the source of the suffering that we're experiencing. We become the author of our own life and we choose to come free of our bondage. And that choice isn't in the mental necessarily. It may not even be in the emotional. It is something in our very being that longs or strives to come out. This longing or striving to come out of separation, the loss of love, the ignorance, the self-destructive patterns of behaviors, the selfishnesses, that we've allowed to go on 
it takes this force that arises from our very being and what that is that's our being waking up from the cage of its bondage and it creates a feeling of aspiration although that aspiration may stir first feel like despair anguish at our separation anguish at our our plight our condition not necessarily knowing how to get out of it but striving to get out of it, to find the way that's truer, that where there is love, where there is light, where there's wisdom, where there's peace, where there's harmony. So we begin to listen to another part of ourselves beyond our mind, which is the biggest trickster, and even our human heart that keeps us looking for satisfaction and happiness through another, through a relationship, to a certain set of friends, to a certain set of conditions. And we begin to find that there's something within us that can only be satisfied when we meet that. And at first, we don't have that discrimination. At first, when the aspiration comes, we don't know what we're aspiring for. There's a longing, but we don't know what we're longing. We just know that this condition of bondage isn't it. And we're looking to, for relief, for peace, for something truer. That longing, that aspiration, is like a prayer to the universe. I know, because I can hear it. I can hear, I can feel true aspiration. I can feel true longing. And I know that the divinity, which I am also, as all of you are, feels and knows it too. And it cannot help but respond. It cannot help but bring you exactly what you need to take you out of your suffering, to show you the way. The only thing is what we do with that is we keep saying, no, this isn't it. <laughs> Divine gives us exactly what we need to come out of our despair. And we say, no, 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 it's not this. The universe is constantly showing us what we need to meet, what we need to see, what we need to experience to become free of our bondage when we are truly aspiring, when we're truly ignited with that cry of the soul. So what happens is as if you develop a radar, you develop a sensing device that pops up, right? Like from the top of your head. And it starts looking for true. What is true? What is real? When this sensing device comes up, then it recognizes truth. It recognizes what's real automatically, and their sense of recognition, it says, go there. It's like to come to Taravanamli, go there. To seek to hear someone speak and to feel a resonance in your system. The resonance is because your, your, your soul is thirsty. It's looking to grasp, to have an experience of that, of its own nature. And as soon as it gets something in the vicinity, it recognizes, oh, well, that's what I'm looking for. I got it. I want more of that, whatever that is. It might be peace. It might be calmness. It might be a moment of bliss or a glimpse of other dimensions than this dimension. It may be an experience of happiness or joy that has no outside cause. But these become <coughs> then your north. They become this ability to recognize or to respond to these signals is what starts giving you the ability to discriminate between what is true and what is not true. And it's not, a, not just a mental process, but for some people the mind is an asset, but for most people the mind is an enemy. Usually what's true or not true is best felt in the heart, the higher heart. And there's this recognition and feeling of yes, that comes with that moment of truth.